Hello and welcome back to Amcode. Last lecture was really fun and I hope you enjoyed it. Here we have seen how we can integrate MongoDB with Apache Spark and use the read and write method to read and write the data from MongoDB. So that was really fun. But now let's take a one step further and integrate our Apache Spark with Cassandra, which is again another very popular NoSQL database in the big data right now. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so let's get started with integrating Cassandra with our Apache Spark. So if you have like Cassandra installed on your PC or else you're running it on cloud, then you will be needing some of the parameters like the port number and the connection details to able to integrate your Spark with Cassandra. But in this case, we are using HDP Sandbox because it comes pre-installed with Cassandra with a minimal configuration. And if you want to set up Cassandra in HDP Sandbox, then we have all that covered in our Hadoop course. So I'll just give the link in the description below so that you can go through it and install HDB cluster on your system. I'll highly recommend you to do that because in the previous lecture as well, we have used HDB sandbox to integrate MongoDB with Spark and it was very simple and you just have to worry about the connection details and the port number on which that service is active. So we don't have to go into any hassle. That's why we have chosen HDB sandbox because for learning purposes, that will be very good. So without further any ado, let's get started with the coding part. So as you can see, uh, we are using the similar file and the similar schema from the previous lecture. That's because we are only here to see the capability of Spark and how it can connect to different databases. We're not going to discuss another file and create another code because that is going to happen in the upcoming lectures. And we have seen those in the previous lectures as well. So this lecture is totally focused on how we can connect Cassandra to Spark. So this is a pretty similar code. You have all the packages imported as well as the parser input function. So some of you may have not been seen the previous lecture. So let me show you the file first. Okay, so this is basically our data file, which we are going to create RDD on top of it. So what we have is we have the user ID, the age of that user, the gender of that user, the occupation of that user and the zip code where that user resides. And as you have seen that this file doesn't have any header. So we have to explicitly provide the schema by using the map function. So since we are creating RDD in this example, we need to create a new function called parser input and pass all the parameters. And as you can see, this file is a pipe delimited and it's a text file. So that's why we are going to go with the RDD approach instead of data frame because it will make more sense. So this data comes originally from the movies data set. So this is just the users who have given some rating to a particular movie. We don't have movie ID and all present. So, and we are not going to go into detail of that. We just need to write this data on the Cassandra. So in Cassandra, similarly, you will be having a database and the table, but the thing is it's a NoSQL database. So, and it stores the data in a columnar fashion so that the read and write request on that database will be way more efficient and faster than any other database many companies who are generating a lots of data who don't have a specific schema then they will go with the no sql databases like cassandra so enough talking let's jump on to the code and see what it is doing okay so in our code as we have seen that we have passed the parser input function which takes the line and use the split function and it provides the delimiter of our file so in this case our file is a pipe delimited so that's why the fields will represent the components of that line which are delimited by the pipe character and as you can see we are returning a row by using the row function and we are just accessing the values from the fields using the indexes. So what we are doing is we are providing the data type as well. As you can see the user ID having the integer data type at the zeroth index. Then we have the age, gender, occupation, zip code, etc. So all it is doing is it is returning the row. So with this row we can pass it into the map function. But first we need to create a spark session first. So as you can see, we have created a spark session and told it in the spark variable and we have used the builder method to create it and provided the app name as Cassandra example, as well as we have provided the config on which the Cassandra is active. This is very important. So as you can see, we have provided the config for spark Cassandra connection host and this parameter is having the port number, which is 127.0.0.1 at which the Cassandra is accessible to spark. 
and we have used the get or create to get or create a new session for our application. So the first step would be we have to provide an RDD on top of a raw text file. As you can see, we have just used the Spark context and the dot text file method and pass the HDFS path. So as you can see, we need to make sure that this particular file is present in the this HDFS file. So all we have to do is we have to go to the users Maria underscore dev, which is our username, and we will create a new folder Cassandra and store the movies dot user file into it. And it will be good to go and we can kick off this file. So as you can see, we have provided the map function and to provide the schema to our RDD because as we have already seen, this doesn't have any header. So it makes sense to make a parser input function and pass it using the map function. And as you can see, we have converted that RDD into a data frame. So we have created a user's data set and we have just used the create data frame method of the Spark session to and we have passed the user's RDD. So this will make data frame for you, which you can write it on any other database. But in this case, we are using the Cassandra. You can also write your data frame into various RDBMS sources as well. But to let you know the capability of Spark, we have taken the different approach and only integrated with NoSQL databases because that is very fun. And most of the companies are already migrating their relational databases to NoSQL because it makes sense in the agile development because it will not have any hassle of administrative tasks to change your schema over time. And at last, we have used the right method to write our data frame into the Cassandra. So as you can see, we have to provide the format. So which is a particular format to integrate Spark with Cassandra. So this org.apache.spark.sql.cassandra is a particular format present for Cassandra. So if you are going to integrate Cassandra with Spark, you have to provide this format only. And we have used the append method because you can, you can use override method as well. It totally depends upon your application. And as you can see in option, you have to provide the table and the key space. So key space, you will be get confused, but key space is just like a table in RDBMS, but in Cassandra, we call it as a key space. So here we have the table and the key space as movies data. And we have the save method to load that data frame into our key space. So this is all, it is a very simple code and you just need to have the connection details for your database. So once you're done with your analytics and you have got the final data frame, you will be able to write it down at any other databases. You can also integrate it with any databases which are deployed on cloud platforms as well. So if you have like active databases lying around in Azure or AWS, you just need the connection details as well as the proper permissions in place. And it'll be good to integrate all this with your Spark. So the first step would be we need to get this code from the GitHub repository because this code is already available in the GitHub and I'll be providing the link in the description below so that you will not go into hassle. And the movies.user file is also available on GitHub. So I'll putting the links to all in the description below so that you don't have to go into any hassles. So let's jump on to our SDP sandbox. So I hope you already have deployed SDP sandbox or if you have like local Cassandra installed, then no worries. Okay. So if you have chosen the path for SDP sandbox, then you're good to go. You just need to kick off your SDP sandbox and wait for at least 15 to 20 minutes to get all the services running without any issues. So as you can see, I have already kept it in running position to save some time and we can jump onto your favorite browser and just click on localhost 8080 to the Ambari login page. Okay. So you just have to go and just click on the localhost 8080. So Ambari is just like a UI to interact with your Hadoop cluster. Okay. So here you have to provide the Maria underscore dev as a username because these are the usernames which are already created by Cloudera and Cloudera is the owner for HDP sandbox. So the username would be Maria underscore dev as well as the password, which is Maria underscore dev only. You just have to sign in. Okay. So once you're signed in, as you can see, we don't have any issues, but we have got one alert in the ranger service, but anyhow, we, d we are not using ranger in our example. We just want to make sure that our Cassandra and the HDFS is running fine because that is all we need to do. Okay, so just go into here and go into the files view to access the HDFS now. Okay, so once you're in, you just have to go to the specific path which we have mentioned into our code. 
so that path is nothing but you have to go to the user now and in user you have to find mari underscore dev so here it is and here let's create one folder we have already created mongodb for our previous lecture so let's create one folder here so our new folder will be called as cassandra so you just have to remember this name or path because that's what you have to provide in your code so in this case we have provided cassandra we'll add it and in cassandra you will be uploading that particular file so you'll just give upload and just click on the upload so it will just give you to so my file was already in the c and the spark course and here my file is movies.user so you'll be downloading this file from the gate so that's what you have to do before you kick off your job so you just select that and yeah it is successfully uploaded so if you just open this file and there you go you got all this data which we have just seen so you just close it and just it is a time to open a putty terminal to interact with your hadoop cluster as well as the linux box where that hadoop cluster is deployed so all you have to do is open putty terminal so if you're totally new with this hdp sandbox or the putty terminal or all these tools you are using or the terminology then i'll highly recommend you to first watch our full hadoop course because that will make more sense so if you are entering the big data world it is very important to get basic understanding of hadoop cluster because hadoop is like the origin of learning big data and it is like a basic i know most of the companies are not even using hadoop but to get you started and get build understanding of distributed computing hadoop will be the best choice for you to get started and hdp sandbox is also free of cost it comes with out of the box 30 to 40 services which are no sql databases real time streaming machine learning and all so you will get to know a lot with this so enough talking you have to just open like the host name so host name would be maria_dev at the rate local host and the port number is 2222 so you just have to open a new session here and as you can see here maria_dev is the username as well as the password you already know maria_dev okay so we have successfully logged in the first step would be to get our code and go to the directory where cassandra is installed so if your hdb cluster is not configured with cassandra we have that video as well so what are you waiting for i'll be giving the link to the description below so that you can go through it and if you face any difficulties let me know in the comments and i'll get back to you at the earliest but first you need to make sure that you are logging in as a root user so let's do that now okay so just give like su root to log in as a root user and you have to remember the password so if you are first time logging in as a root user the password would be, would be hadoop in lower case but in my case i have already changed my password because it wanted me to do that so i'll just give my password okay so we have logged in as a root user now so the first step would be to get the code okay so to get the code you just have to submit a duplicate command so give duplicate https colon slash slash raw dot github user content dot com slash ashe patil 11 slash adup slash main slash cassandra park dot py so this is our file name so if everything looks good hit enter okay so that was a mistake i just kept a extra w here okay so i think yeah so as you can see if you hit ls you will be having the cassandra spark here so let's take a look at it so ls cassandra spark.py and as you can see it's the same file nothing has changed we got a pass input function creating the spark session creating the rdd and all that stuff so it looks good only so just get back but before kicking off your job your cassandra services should be starting so to start your cassandra service all you have to do is you have to submit one command which is service cassandra start that's all you have to do so just hit enter just give it some time okay so as you can see your services has been started you can just kick off your job but before that let's use the spark version 2 because sometimes hdb cluster comes with two spark versions so in this case we have to use the two version so you have to set one property as export space spark underscore major underscore version 
equal to two. That's it. And you're good to go. So all you have to do is give the spark dash submit. And as usual, you have to provide the package to able to give the connector to your spark application. So in this case, our package name would be you have to give like dash dash packages and you have to go like doc com dot data stacks dot spark colon spark dash cassandra dash connector underscore 2.11 colon 2.4.2 which is like a version and finally the file name which is like a cassandra spark dot py which is your code so if everything looks good you can just kick off the job so just hit enter so as you can see, it is running on Spark 2. Okay, so it will just take some time to check it off. So it will just you converting the DAG to connect with Spark and just write your data. So as you can see, you got like some logs here. Okay, so it will take some time because it's doing a lot of work in the back end. And there you go, your job has been successfully completed. Okay, so to verify your data, you just have to go to the SQL SH, which is like a command line for your Cassandra. You just have to provide the command as SQL SH. That's it. Just hit enter. And there you have it. You are now connected to your Cassandra cluster. So all you have to do is you just have to go and use the database. So just provide use movies data so this is our database name and once you are in the movies data you just have to get some data from the users table so all you can do is just select some data so in this case let's select all the data from the users and we'll just limit it at 10 because why not okay so once you submit the command and there you have it you got the data so this was really fun we have just used cassandra to write our data frame and you got to know the power of spark and how we can integrate with different databases so if you find any difficulties or any issues in your installation or the job then you can let me know in the comments and we can discuss it to solve your issue but until then i'll see you in the next lecture i hope you like this lecture so please subscribe to our channel and also ring the notification bell to get the latest updates and don't forget to follow us our social media which i have linked in the description below thanks for watching